Hi, welcome back to ES346 Basic Thermodynamics. This is Module 1.2, Unit Conversions. The corresponding sections of the textbook is Section 1.2. There's two learning objectives to this module. At the end of this module, you will know the difference between dimensions and units, and you'll be able to convert quantities between different units. So first, let's determine the difference between dimensions and units. So when we talk about dimensions, what those are is how something is measured or how it is characterized. So for example, let's look at this picture here where we have a sumo wrestler and think of various attributes of this sumo wrestler. Well, he has a length and so that where would be a dimension. Call that L for a length. He would have a temperature, we'll call that T. Um, there's an amount of this sumo wrestler who's fairly large, so he would have some type of mass, I'll call it M. And he's probably of some certain age, so we'll go ahead and call that T. That's not necessarily an exhaustive list, but those are the main dimensions that we'll be interested in in this class. So now, if we look at units, Units are different in dimensions in that this allows our way to measure that dimension or tell us the magnitude. So, for example, if we look at the length, there's various units that we could use. So, for example, we could talk about that in meters or perhaps feet. We could talk about it in millimeters or maybe miles. Those are all different units, and there's many, many units for each dimension. If I look at temperature, there's a few that you're probably familiar with, degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. And then there's the absolute scale, which is Kelvin. And in the English system, that would be Rankin, or R. In terms of mass, or the amount of something, the unit would be a kilogram, a pound. And I'm going to call, put an M after there to remind myself that that's a pound mass to discriminate it from a pound force. We'll look at that a little bit later. Um, we could also have this in terms of milligrams. Um, or maybe a ton. And let's look at the last dimension down there, which I had time. We might have, for example, seconds. Uh, we could have a year. Um, we could have an hour. Now, there's more dimensions than just the primary dimensions that I have. So now let's go ahead and look at, at a different character here. This is Iron Man, and think about some of the additional characteristics that he has that maybe the sumo wrestler didn't have. Now, a secondary or derived dimension is a product and quotient of primary units. So, for example, Iron Man has a velocity, and a velocity is a length for time. He probably just took off, and he has some type of acceleration, which has a unit of length per time squared. So you see these derived units are products and quotients of our primary dimension. Um, if he was to collide into something, there would be a force, and the force has the units of a mass, length per time squared. You already remember from physics that force is mass times acceleration, so we see our mass and our acceleration uh, dimensions there. And in, the, in that collision, there would probably be some type of energy, and so the mixture of, of units for energy, well, as we'll see later, that's a force through a distance, so it's going to be a mass a length squared per time squared. So these are called derived dimensions or secondary dimensions because they're mixtures of the primary dimensions. Now if we go ahead and look at some of the units of the derived dimensions, sometimes they're mixtures simply of the primary units. So for example, we may talk about meters per second or we may talk about miles per hour. Um, an acceleration would be, for example, a meter per second squared maybe a foot per second squared. Sometimes derived units have their own unit name. So, for example, force is often reported in terms of newtons. Um, in an English unit, it's also the pound, and I'm going to call that LBF for pound force, to discriminate that from the pound mass, which is a, a uh, unit of mass or amount of material. In terms of energy, when we often run into in the English system is joules. Um, in the English system, one will often use is called the BTU, which stands for British Thermal Unit. So 
So each set of these units tend to be broken into, into individual systems, and you're probably familiar with the two main ones, which are called the English system and the SI system, or also known as the metric system. So if we look at different units in there, the space or length dimension in, in the SI system would be the meter in temperature, often degrees Celsius or Kelvin. The amount of material is the kilogram, and in time, we use the second. In the English system for space or length, what we tend to use is often is the foot. In terms of temperature, it would be degrees Fahrenheit or degrees Rankin. That's the absolute scale for the English system. The amount of material would be the pound mass. You see that M again, LBM, indicates that pound of material. And time is a second. Both the English system and the SI system use seconds for time. So now let's move on and look at converting between different units. So the thing to remember when you're doing unit conversions is that you're actually doing a fairly straightforward operation that you recognize from math, which is anything you multiply by 1 returns itself. So if I take a variable A multiplied by 1, I get simply A back. When we do unit conversions, we're going to start with one thing, and then we're going to do a lot of multiplications by 1 until we end up with what we wanted at the end. So, for example, I'm going to convert 5 miles per hour into the units of meters per second. So I'm going to write down 5 miles per hour. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by this by things that are 1 until I end up with the units of meters per second. So I'm trying to get rid of miles per hour and convert that to meters per second. So, for example, to get rid of the hours, I know that 1 hour is 3,600 seconds. So 1 hour over 3,600 seconds, that's 1. So I'm just multiplying by 1. I'm not changing anything other than the units. And I see my hours cancel. So now I have miles per second. I want to go ahead and get from miles in terms of meters. And so I would need to do another, they're called conversion factors. So there's 1,609 meters in 1 mile. And so now I look at my miles cancel. And so my units I'm left are meters per second. So if I go ahead and multiply everything on the top, divide by everything on the bottom, I'm going to have my new number, which is 2.23, and the units on this are meters per second. Okay, so the next thing, if you're going to do that, is you need to know what are those conversion factors. And you never need to memorize conversion factors. You can always find them. Here I've reproduced a section of the one from the textbook. These are found on the inside cover of your textbook. And the way that it's shown, again, I'm showing just a section of it, is on the far left they have different dimensions. So here I'm looking at the dimensions of power. And they give you various units in the metric system, some in the English system, and then also conversion factors between the two. So for example, let's go ahead and look at converting 100 watts. And I want to convert that into BTUs per second. I'm trying to get BTUs per second. Those are both units of power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for conversion factors that will let me get from watts to BTUs per second. And if I look over here, I see here's a BTU per second, and I see that that right there is a watt or a kilowatt. So I can go ahead and use that conversion factor right there. All of those things, the three lines there are all equal. So I'm going to go ahead and put down 745.7 watts is 0 0.7068 BTUs per second. My watts cancel, and now I can go ahead and get my unit in BTUs per second. And that is about 0 0.095 BTUs per second. Now, these conversion factors often are fairly strange when you're moving between the metric and the English system, but you can always go ahead and find them on the table. So just find the conversion factors at work. And there's no single way to do it, as long as you end up with the right units in the end. 